Bartolomé Esteban Murillo was born at the end of December 1617 in Seville, in the south of Spain. This year marks the 400th anniversary of his birth. And to celebrate this at the Frick Collection, we are reuniting for the first time since the early 18th century his only two known self-portraits. The first of the two self-portraits, which dates to around 1650-1655, when Murillo was in his mid-30s, was acquired by Henry Clay Frick in 1904, and it was the first Spanish painting he acquired for his collection. In fact, the self-portrait remained in the private collection of the Frick family until 2014, when it was given to the museum. Soon after the self-portrait arrived here at the Frick collection, it was restored by conservators at the Metropolitan Museum here in New York, and a new 17th century Spanish frame was given for the painting. Murillo in the 1650s was one of the most celebrated artists in Seville. Seville was a great international center in Spain and Europe at the time, and Murillo was one of the greatest artists of its golden age in the 17th century. Nothing in the self-portrait points to the fact that he is a painter. He appears as a rich, well-dressed man from Seville. He is surrounded in a very strange framing device made out of fictive stone, a weathered and ruined chipped block which sits on another stone ledge. The inscription with the biographical data of Murillo's life was actually added after his death in 1682. It is a very strange conceit, and one that Murillo hardly ever used again subsequently. Almost 20 years later, Murillo painted a second self-portrait, which is now in the National Gallery in London. He obviously appears older, and by this point, his wife had died, and five of his nine children had also died. He was a single father of four teenage children, and his career had developed even further in Seville with more prestigious commissions. The second self-portrait is a more complex image than the first one. Murillo is also dressed in elegant clothing from the time and is also framed in a stone fictive frame. But this time he is surrounded by other objects and an inscription at the bottom is part of the conceit of the painting to begin with. On a stone ledge at the bottom to the left is a drawing and a chalk holder with a compass and a wooden ruler, while on the opposite side to the right are the painter's palette and paintbrushes. These very much identify Murillo as an artist. The inscription at the bottom is a dedication from Murillo to his own children. Both self-portraits were painted for Murillo himself and for his family and were passed to the next generation. The stone frames in the two self-portraits are particularly original conceits of Murillo's. The format relates to contemporary prints that were circulating in Seville at the time. Murillo conflates the ideas of antiquity, broken stone of the first self-portrait, with the idea of frontispieces and prints, which you see more in the second self-portrait of the 1670s. He also plays with space and with the effects of trompe l'oeil, if you look at the Frick self-portrait, the idea of the block which sits physically in a space over a second block is very much designed to trick the eye into believing that we're looking at a real block of stone within which then Murillo's image sits somewhat uneasily and in an awkward way in terms of spatial relation. While with the London self-portrait, Murillo's hand projects out of the frame into our space. Early in the 18th century, both self-portraits traveled out of Spain and throughout the centuries, they promoted Murillo's image. And a selection of books in the exhibition shows how these images appeared on the frontispieces of many of Murillo's early biographies and how they transmitted through posterity the image of this well-known 17th century master. A number of other portraits by Murillo with similar visual solutions are shown in the exhibition, including his very first dated and signed portrait, that of Juan de Saavedra from 1650, in which also the stone frame plays a prominent role. In the show you will see other portraits by Murillo, prints, drawings and books which replicate and reproduce the image of Murillo in the centuries after his death. <laughs>